It's something that most of us rarely think about, but when we sit down for a meal, the plate of food in front of us is a reflection of the weather. When the weather is good with a sufficient balance of sun and rain, crops flourish and food is in good supply. It's affordable, readily available, and your plate can be piled high. But what happens when the rain falls in torrents, flooding fields, washing away soil and crops? A lot of what you had on your plate disappears because it's not available. It's been destroyed by the flooding. The same will happen if the rains disappear altogether and farmers try to meet the food demand during a drought. Without a doubt, or weather, climate variability and extremes affects what we have on our plate. To secure the food supply of the Caribbean, we must break new ground and make our weather and climate serve our agriculture. We don't need scientists to tell us that our climate and, as a result, our weather is changing. We all experience it in our day-to-day -day living, but it's particularly worrying for farmers who need information from meteorological services to plan for the planting of their crops. Information such as uh, temperature range, uh, forecasting, uh, you know, showers, uh, even, even because we're in the hurricane belt and we're also in the hurricane season. Timely information as to, you know, storms that are out there, systems that are out there. Uh, if it's, there's a forecast for um, dry weather, um, you have a choice either to um, reduce your production capacity uh, relative to your uh, water capacity, or you can look to enhance or boost your water capacity, water storage capacity. If the forecast is uh, for lots of rain, um, then you more or less go about selecting varieties that can withstand uh, torrential rains or wet, very humid, wet conditions. As crops don't grow overnight and often take many months to mature, farmers therefore need long-range or seasonal forecasts of the climate. The Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology has been providing these climate forecasts for more than a decade. They provide valuable information for decision-makers on farms. Let me give you an example of this. Back in 2009-10, we had one of the worst droughts in the Caribbean for about 50 years. And uh, all through 2009, particularly the latter uh, part of 2009, our seasonal forecast suggested that there would be below normal rainfall. And uh, in collaboration, in conjunction with the Caribbean Drought and Precipitation Monitoring Network, which monitors rainfall and by extension monitors drought, we recognized that by the end of 2009, we were in a period of severely below normal rainfall in the latter half of our wet season. But then we recognized from the forecast that the next three months, at least, in other words, January to March 2010 and probably beyond, based on the forecast, would continue to be drier than normal in the dry season. So you would have been having a dry, dry season on the heels of a drier than normal wet season, which for our Caribbean region could have been fairly devastating, we recognize. And because of this, we sent alerts to all the national met services in the Caribbean, alerting them, as I said, to the fact that we're entering into a period of potentially severe drought. Climate and weather are not the same, and it's important that we understand the difference. Weather is really the day-to-day -day weather, so it's today, what is the weather tomorrow? It's rainy, it's, uh, the temperature is warm or cold. Climate is the statistics of weather. <clears throat> so, for example, when we take a look at what is November climate like, you're averaging all the daily weather observations over the last 30 years into some kind of average. That is what climate is. To make the connection between meteorology and agriculture, those in the business of forecasting need to understand what farmers require and farmers need to be able to interpret the information that's given to them. In 2009, the Caribbean Agrometeorological Initiative, funded by the European Union, brought farmers, meteorologists and extension officers in 10 Caribbean countries face to face. We've worked along with a number of global partners, university training institutions, to be able to provide information related to weather, climate and climate change for the benefit of our farmers. 
particularly you heard climate change. Not that we want to provide climate change information, but we recognize the, 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 the environment, the climate is changing. And we recognize that our farmers can no longer do things the way they used to do based on past climate knowledge. Weather and climate extremes impacts heavily on agriculture and climate change is exacerbating these extremes. What we have been seeing across the Caribbean is an increasing trend in the daytime temperatures as well as the nighttime temperatures. However, for the rainfall, we have not been really seeing a, a real trend in the rainfall patterns. Global models have projected that the, the rainfall totals would decrease. However, we are not really seeing that trend. They also projected that the intense rainfall activities that those would increase and yet again we haven't really seen much evidence of that increase an increase in your nighttime temperatures could lead to flower drop in some in some plants and the very warm daytime temperatures you can have a lot of wilting and stuff like that with your plants and therefore you could have a reduction in your yields and you could also see a proliferation of certain pests and diseases. Traditionally, there's not been a lot of information sharing between meteorological services and farmers, but weather services for decades have been recording and archiving information, information that farmers need. Recently, the agriculturists have become more vocal in terms of making demands as to what are the precise events that they would like the meteorologists to analyse. Um, and these usually start with the start of the rains, with dry spells, with the length of the season. And this is the beginning of the analyses. And what we're finding is once these questions are answered, then the farmers start realising how much value there is and they proceed to other questions. Giving climate and weather information alone to farmers is, however, not the sole answer to improving food security. Farmers, ministries and departments of agriculture have also been collecting data. We have a vast amount of data going back many, many years. And from that data, we're able to um, come up with the kind of information that's required as input uh, for the modelling and so on uh, to provide information for the farmers. A crop model is a computer program that uses uh, what we call local information, such as uh, weather data, weather observations, information about local soils, and crop management, which means when a planter, uh, sorry, when a grower plants his crop, which crop he plants, which variety he plants, to predict how quickly the plant grows, how quickly it develops, how quickly it forms leaves, and at the end, how much product we can harvest. If you're able to understand how crop models work, you could probably do a few demonstration projects, calibrate the model to your local conditions, and then you can do a whole range of scenario generation within the model and say to the farmer, well, here are some of the limits that you have. App application of fertilizer, the best time to do it is X. You know, amount of water, irrigation, you probably don't need to irrigate as much or irrigate less in this particular time of the crop. Those are things that can now be done. With such advantages, modeling is therefore one of the ways forward. Not only can it be used to forecast the direct effects on crops of weather and climate, but it can also be used to project how pests and pathogens will react to climatic conditions, thereby allowing us to control them. We can also model a crop's water needs. Anyone who has a little kitchen garden in their backyard knows that when it doesn't rain and the soil lacks moisture, you bring out a watering can. That's irrigation on a very small scale. But what about a farm with many acres under cultivation? That requires large and sometimes costly irrigation systems. Modeling can help identify when to irrigate and how much water is needed, but the type of irrigation system that is best suited to a farm depends often on the availability of water. Irrigation systems are perfect solutions when there's not enough water. When there's too much rain, however, proper drainage of farmlands is critical. So too is the creation of barriers, often made of rows of grass, to hold soil together to stop it from being washed away in torrential rains. In effect, it all comes down to farmers being able to control what nature gives in excess and supplementing when there's a shortfall. Not only is this true for rainfall, but temperature, humidity and sunlight too. 
hence the concept of microclimates. A microclimate is any atmospheric zone which differs from the surrounding climate. So for example, if you have a little corn in the, in the yard somewhere where the sun doesn't shine as, as much and where, like say, it's sheltered from the wind, you'll find that there are some plants that tend to develop there and grow there in that area that you wouldn't find in the rest of your yard. It stands to reason that if we can control the climate and make it ideal for each crop we wish to grow, then we can get better yields. This can be done through the construction of greenhouses and row covers, which are placed over crops as they grow in fields. Ensuring that the work started by the Caribbean Agrometeorological Initiative continues is in the hands of national tripartite committees, consisting of these key players. Pharma, Agriculture Extension Service and Meteorological Service, and it would be led by the Meteorological Service because it's weather and climate, climate change information. And the best place that should come from is your National Met Service. So they would lead the process. But of course, in each country, the context is different. So there might be some key players outside of those three who, based on the country context, as I said, would be seen as a key player. And there are some countries, if I give an example, in St. Lucia, for example, the Department of Engineering that looks at, at irrigation is part of their tripartite committee. In the various farmers' forums, many of the farmers present were surprised that the drought of 2010 had been predicted. This pointed to the fact that while many of the region's meteorologists may be good scientists, they may not necessarily be the best communicators. The farmer doesn't need to know the complicated uh, scientific jargon. It only needs to know a useful information. If I know when it is going to rain, I can organize to plant or to do what is needed to get a good production. It is as simple as that. A multimedia approach involving traditional and new media would therefore achieve the best results. Meteorological services in some countries, such as Antigua, have been issuing in print and online national bulletins on a regular basis. The Caribbean Institute for Meteorology and Hydrology has been publishing a regional bulletin and posting long-range forecasts on their website. These are the beginnings of a new era in agriculture and livestock farming. It's all centered around meteorology, how weather and climate play an undisputed role in how crops grow, flower, are pollinated and impacted by pests, how large and how small yields can be, how pastures for livestock grazing and the animals themselves can be affected. We may not be able to completely protect our farms from the worst weather events like hurricanes, but with new science, research and the sharing of information, we can help protect them from these conditions and otherwise improve the quantity and quality of our food supply through improved decision making. The dialogue has started and has shown that the way forward is in breaking new ground, with climate and weather serving agriculture.